Tonight is the beginning of a new era, and we are meant to celebrate the resurrection tonight, and, and we will more than anyone ever has. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing how Netflix's Midnight Mass tackles cultism and fanaticism in modern religion. Bless me, Lord, for I am going to sin. What did you think of the show? Let us know in the comments. Midnight Mass explores why people seek religion. With its characters of varying beliefs, it shows that everyone seeks answers to two universal questions. How should we live and what happens when we die? That's the whole question. It is. What happens when we die? Though some aspects seem cultish, it ultimately leans more towards religious fanaticism. So what is a cult exactly? Cults, of course, is a very broad term. For a lot of scholars of religion, we tend to not use the word cult because, you know, as we joke, cult plus time equals religion. By definition, a cult isn't inherently bad. It's described as, quote, a religion regarded as unorthodox or spurious, or, quote, great devotion to a person, idea, object, movement, or work. It's what happens in the cult that categorizes it as either destructive or benign, with benign being something relatively healthy and destructive having nefarious intentions. Open your minds, open your hearts, and, and listen to that voice, that voice in the back of your head, that, that voice the world has tried to silence, has tried to teach you to ignore. The word cult is used to label any following that seems strange and or dangerous. The term has become overgeneralized in society. We think of groups like the Manson family, the People's Temple, the Branch Davidians, and more recently, Nexium. With these specific examples, there was repeated sexual and financial exploitation. And no two cults are completely alike. Cult expert Stephen Hassan outlines the common methods in his BITE model, which stands for behavior, information, thought, and emotional control. And essentially, the BITE model offers the my cutting edge approach for how anyone can evaluate whether or not they've been a victim of mind control. St. Patrick's doesn't meet all the criteria of a cult. Behavior isn't really controlled, but a select few are burdened with Father Paul's secret, which isolates them from others. Who are you? You know who I am. Come on. Really look. Parishioners aren't prevented from accessing information that contradicts the church's teachings, but they are deceived by their leaders. But I know one thing, just one thing for a fact. Father Paul lied to me tonight. Thoughts are not controlled and no form of hypnotizing is employed. However, followers are encouraged to internalize the Catholic doctrine in a good versus evil kind of light. What is otherwise horrible is good because of where it's headed. Religion, more or less, can practice levels of emotional control with fear-based ideology. Follow these rules or suffer the consequences. All those days you decided not to worship. All those days you turned your back on God. Well, the tools for your salvation were always there. The doors were always open, but you didn't. But St. Patrick's leaders do display cultish behavior. After Pruitt believes he was resurrected and made immortal by an angel of God, he decides to bring this gift of eternal life to his community. When Jesus is risen and death itself is lain dead. He truly believes that death isn't a part of God's plan anymore, but he unwittingly brings a full-blown vampire onto the island. Mm. Pruitt slash Paul may have started out with good intentions. However, the arrogance of believing that God has made him pure makes him justify becoming a murderer. And this leads him down a path of deception. The graces of the Holy Spirit rained down on me. He had taken that guilt. He had cleansed my conscience, for I had simply done his will, been his vessel. A murderer, maybe. So was Moses. He lies to everyone about his true identity and begins spiking the communion wine with the angel's blood in an effort to heal the parishioners. Come on. 
body of Christ. The miracle of Lisa walking shocks the entire community and further opens them up to Father Paul's influence. It's this very miracle that increases the attendance at church with people desperate to be healed. God's gifts are as tangible as the ground beneath our feet. What makes the residents of Crockett Island so vulnerable to the church is the current state of their community. This isn't a community anymore, honey. It's a ghost. The island is suffering after oil spilled into their waters, affecting their businesses and livelihood. All the stress and uncertainty that comes with a setback like that leaves them almost desperate for a solution. And what the church provides is a level of certainty. Something's happening here, and I can't pretend it isn't. The atmosphere is dire, and some of them just need something to believe in. That's where Father Paul comes in. But the miracles he brings with him come at a fatal cost. <laughs> Religious fanaticism resembles cultish behavior, but is ultimately different. Fanatics are obsessively devoted to a person, group, or belief system. And this obsession clouds their judgment in other areas of life. It's a cliche to say that the Lord works in mysterious ways, but he does. I can testify to that. And he worked through me. And Joe Colley was called home. Religious texts are interpreted in different ways by different people, and often skewed to fit the individual's or group's personal agenda. Return all his graces to sender then and let your little girl sit back down in that wheelchair. But do not cherry pick the glories of God! Fanatics usually see their set of beliefs as the one true system and therefore force their ideologies on others. They use intimidation and manipulation tactics, weaponizing faith in the way that corrupts belief systems. And no one on Crockett Island weaponizes faith more than Bev Keen. Who knows what else he has done to deprive others of God's graces. Judas was part of God's plan, too. Judas was part of it. Bev Keen, Crockett Island's self-appointed judge of morality, displays both cultish and fanatic behavior. When there's a meeting about distributing Bibles in school, Bev dismisses Sheriff Hassan's Muslim beliefs and any religion that's not her own. If we had a Muslim faculty member and they quoted the Quran to the kids, I would be fine with that, so long as the text wasn't offensive, which, forgive me for saying so, a good deal of that text can be. She's willing to harm, threaten, and kill in the name of God. She poisons Joe's dog just because it barked at her and because she doesn't like its owner to begin with. After those cats, not knowing what on earth could have done it? I put some out strategically, carefully around my property. A few others requested I do the same for them. And if that poor dog, if it ingested some accidentally, well, I'll just be a wreck. Bev is an example of a religious fanatic who arms herself with the words of the Bible and uses her belief system to justify her abhorrent actions. Do not think that I have come to bring peace. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. It was Jesus who said that. Jesus Christ himself. Like in cults, followers are promised a guide to eternal life and enlightenment and establish an us versus them mentality, creating an external threat to fight against. And with these elements comes a false sense of superiority. Sturge and Wade and Dolly Scarborough become close allies of Father Paul. They all watch him die and then come back to life and are now convinced he's immortal. <laughs> This tight-knit group is made to feel special, a form of manipulation that cults often use to gain and maintain followers. But it's the final sacrament that puts their loyalty to the test. By the end of the series, St. Patrick's has become a destructive cult when Father Paul encourages his parishioners to drink poison. The final transformation will not be yours unless you let your earthly body die so that your divine body can awaken. The penultimate episode has been compared to the People's Temple, better known as Jonestown, the infamous cult created by Jim Jones. The cult leader coerced his followers into poisoning themselves and their children and dying in the name of salvation. And like Jonestown, some members panic when they realize what's being asked of them. 
the church already had the town divided, though the majority are on board for this extreme act of devotion. There was a divide between Riley and his parents, which led to multiple arguments. The Scarboroughs, dedicated to Pruitt and Bev, willingly drink the poison, much to Lisa's horror. While Aaron, Lisa, and Mildred are believers, they are vehemently against the bloodbath taking place. Enticed by the onslaught of miracles, Ali tells his dad that he wants to go to church and study the Bible. As Muslims, Hassan is disturbed by this and hopes it's just a phase. But in the end, Ali is one of many who becomes immortal. Brothers and sisters rejoice! The first of the apostles awakes Ali. and they will be thirsty for Ali. communion. Ali. Ali. The blessings of the Lord will be bestowed on all of us. After the carnage, Father Paul regrets his actions that led them here. I was wrong. We, we, we were wrong. We are wrong. And this needs to stop. He asks his family for forgiveness and accepts his oncoming death. Bev, however, is not so accepting. She fights to the end, firmly believing in their cause. But after their shelter is destroyed and there's no other option than to burn in the sunlight, her realization that she could have been wrong doesn't lead her to a place of repentance. Instead, she tries to save herself by literally burying her head in the sand and fails. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. According to creator Mike Flanagan, the angel slash vampire represents religious extremism and fanaticism. The creature is insatiable and never fully fed, relentlessly out for blood. And while its blood created a ravenous hunger in the residents of Crockett Island, the true monsters were always human. While we have a vampire who infiltrates this community, the vampire isn't the thing that tears this community apart. The community is. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.